Welcome to the Farmhead Podcast, Sally. Um, Thank you. Uh, Sally Pullen, who is our Operations Manager and in charge of the Farmhead Cafe. Um, and today we are going to be talking about farm to fork food. And it's obviously a phrase that's banded around quite a lot, isn't it? Farm to mm, fork, mm. farm to table, farm to plate. Mm. All means sort of the same sort of thing. Um, could you tell us, first of all, what you interpret, what, what that means to, to you and what, what you think the term those terms mm. define? Yeah, I think um, the definition of farm to fork is where you is, is getting your supply chain as close as possible to your locality. Um, I think it initially started and was founded specifically around restaurants and cafes buying their produce ideally directly from a farmer in their vicinity and turning that into something nice on the plate. Um, but I think it's been interpreted now and now it extends beyond restaurants and cafes to what we can do in our own homes and to take that into our own homes. Um, so for us at Farm Ed, although I think it's a term that's banded around a lot, to me this is the epitome of farm to fork um, food um, service because we literally are getting our veg, producing our veg on the farm um, by the lovely kitchen garden people who, who, who grow our veg for us. Um, and then we are using that, literally taking that 100 metres into our packing shed, picking it up the next day, washing it and, and turning it into delicious things for the cafe. So it doesn't get any, there's no miles in, involved. Mm. Um, so that's that's interesting. So, so what are the what are the benefits? I mean, what are the what's so good about farm to fork? Why is it such a good thing to to practice and to eat? Well, so I think it's it's obviously got huge community benefits in our in our case mm. in particular yeah. because our kitchen garden people are set up as a CSA, um, which is community supported agriculture. Absolutely, yeah. they're a micro business. Um, which Farm Head Ed has helped facilitate for mutual benefit. And they produce, um, they've grown a lot in the time that we've been here, but they're producing um, a veg pot scheme for our local community. And then we're, well, we're buying about half of the shares that they produce. Um, so there's, they know they've got a consistent income stream um, and a, commun- a local community that buying really buying into what they do. Um, so the the benefits are that you are growing, that you are eating the most nutritious um, vegetables and produce um, that is grown in your area and that you are eating it seasonally, mm. which is when it tastes its best. And I think, you know, it's one of those things that we've become a little bit too far removed from um, because we've been used to going into a supermarket and picking up a, an avocado mm. or strawberries from Spain or things all year round. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And, you know, the reality is they just don't taste the same. Mm. Um, and I and mean, nutri- that, nutritionally, nutritionally, not, there's, no, no, yeah. there's nothing like the nutritional yeah. value in them. Um, mm. So for us, I mean, at the moment, this, this time of year, is uh, it, there's an absolute bounty. Mm. Of, of vegetables, fruit and vegetables around, and um, but that of course brings its own challenges mm. with the, the food to fork, farm to fork concept, um, because you've got to. It is a labour intensive mm. um, job. You know, you're not picking up your celery heads all nicely washed from the supermarket or from your veg supplier. You are. We are literally getting it covered in mud. Mm. Um, and presumably, sort of some quite a lot of wonky veg as well, isn't? I, I guess it's not all all the kind of very neat, f- fully formed, it's all slightly yeah. odd shaped sometimes, and um, yeah. you have to accept, accept you have it to as accept it grows. That, but yeah. that's lovely. Yeah. We Absolutely have lots of lovely. Yeah. Char- yeah. characters going yeah. on. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, that, there is a, a la- it is labour intensive, there is mm. a, a labour love, and there is also at times more produce than you know what to do with, mm. versus in the winter when you've got, a lot less produce and less variety of mm. produce. So how do you how do you manage that? How do you cope with that? Uh, so we're it's still in uh, stages of working that out. Really, yeah. this year we've definitely been a lot better at it than we were last mm-hmm. year. Um, so making sure you've got the manpower to get to get through the veg prep initially, yeah. and then 
looking at different ways in which we can preserve basically so right, okay. we are doing some freezing of produce and vegetables mm. um, and we're doing some preserving so we've got lots of things in pickle at the moment and then some kimchi style sauerkrauts and things that we're oh, you know some fermenting going on um, just seeing how that works for us which mm. has a double benefit because it means that we're able to use the produce but we're also able to extend it and have produce available in the winter mm. when there's less variety around. Mm. Brilliant, yeah. so when, when there's only carrots and potatoes growing we'll have stuff from the summer that we can exactly. use. Exactly, yeah. yeah. Brilliant. Although I think that's part of, for me, that's also part of the, the fun. It, part of the fun <laughs> it is. It is literally yeah. thinking, okay, another four trays of crates of carrots what can I do with these this week and and there's so much available so much material available to us all now mm. you know we use Recipes it, it and, absolutely yeah. there are some really really good websites we use um Riverford yeah. Organics quite a lot Abel and Cole yeah locally Dalesford all of these websites you can pop on and just pop in the seasonal produce and there's loads of dis- different oh, recipe ideas really yeah um so that's really good. And yeah. I think it certainly made me much more aware since mm. I've been at FarmEd about about how much how much more salt how soulful it is mm. when you return to eating mm. more seasonally really. Um, just this weekend I had some, some family over from Australia and um, and Nick, my husband, had been playing around with growing some vegetables in the garden and I'd had a few things from the farm. And um, I'd went, walked up my lane and picked some apples from the orchard and some berries from the hedgerows and made an apple and blackberry crumble and almost everything that we ate on our plates was, was mm. seasonal. Mm. I mean, this time of year, it's really easy to do mm. that. Um, so that's an interesting question. So obviously we've been talking about the cafe. Yes. But for people, um, obviously people can hopefully come to the farm and cafe and experience all that lovely food. But um, in your own home, yeah. how does farm to fork translate into how you what you eat at home and how you do your home cooking. Mm. So it's finding the, the farm locally mm. to you or the veg box scheme because there are more yeah. and more of them around. Mm. And, and I think the, the, the term is local, trying to find yeah. the one that is grown in your area um, because the less miles it's travelled, the better it's going to be for us, the less preserved, you know, no mm. preservation has had to go into and it, it's, you're literally eating it at its freshest. So try and find your local farm shop or a veg pot scheme. Um, often it's a much cheaper way of buying mm. it as well. There's not the packaging involved yeah. in it that we all that we all hate from the supermarket. So try and find that um, and and support that local community mm. and get using lots of lovely things mm. with seasonal veg. Mm. So is that only about veg though, is it? So we've talked talk, no. talk about veg. So so I mean obviously we have cheese here, don't we? Yeah. That, that comes locally. We also have meat that comes from local farms. Yeah. Um, so again, that's so that's not farm to fork, as in it's not. Although our milk obviously comes from our micro dairy, doesn't yeah. it? So that is literally farm to fork, farm to table. Um, but um, the cheese and, and other things. How explain how how that? that yeah. Works. Again, I think it's just you have to accept that there you can't. Well, not many of us could live or would want to live completely just mm. on the produce that we. If can you're get. baking a cake, you, you need sugar from. Yeah. Indeed. Yeah. yeah. So you have got to have some store cupboard essential items yeah. um not only to make sure that you've got a more a varied diet but that it is nutritionally you, you mm. know that you're covering all your bases yeah um getting enough protein and uh, so obviously one source of that is with dairy so the cheeses that we use here at the farm are um all oxfordshire cheeses um, so we use the Norton and Yarrow um, Creamery, which are out at Nettlebed. They do some award-winning, delicious mm. cheeses, goat's cheeses. Um, and just, just trying to buy the produce that is as local as possible mm. to, uh, to us. Mm. And we're, we're certainly spoiled in this area because we've got loads we of lovely. Loads. And people can do that at home. Yeah. Um, yeah. So you go to the supermarket or wherever you need to go to for your store covered essentials. Yeah, so, and, and the markets and then, are still the markets, the markets yeah. are still good places. If you've mm. got a farmer's market near mm. you, then that's a really good place once a month to go and stock mm. up. And I think buying from small local producers is just is you just such a nice thing to yeah, do it's, it's, it's yeah, such a nice it's thing, to do. thing to do. Yeah. Because lots of people discovered it in COVID, didn't they? That yes. was a, um, people were finding farm shops and, and markets and things and that's yeah. sort of 
I think in people's busy lives, that's the other thing, isn't it? It's fitting in with time because you can it just is. pop to the supermarket and buy everything. Yeah. Whereas you've got to be a bit more organised if you're trying to source it from all the local places that, yeah. that are. So, how, that's have true. you got any tips for how I you might manage I that? I do understand that that is, that is a real challenge. Um, you know, I'd love to think that we would return to the days when we had our green grocer mm. and our, our love fish it, yeah. and our butcher on the, and we just pop, pootled along to each one. Um, but that's probably about as realistic as thinking that we'll stop Sunday trading again. Mm. I just don't know whether mm. that will ever happen. But I just think if we all do what we can, mm. um, yeah, then, that's just, yeah, just do, just, yeah. just do what, what we can. And like you say, maybe you just have to factor it in and plan a little mm. bit more. Um, and I guess and make it into a, make it into a pleasure rather than yeah because no, none of us really like going to supermarket no. do we? but but going to popping along to the local butchers and and the local um, veg market is, is actually a really yeah. nice thing to do isn't and building it? relationships with those yeah. people when they do yeah. look after you then yeah. you know yeah. you do know that you're going to get a, you know you're going to get a good mm. a good it's, cut of meat you yeah. know where it's come from um, yeah. so I th- uh, yeah it's an, mm. it's a nicer shopping experience in yeah. your yeah. You know, absolutely. I think. So you've got to finish by your potato salad because we had that on the menu yesterday. Didn't oh yes. We? So just and that just nicely encompasses the whole story yeah. about farm to fork. Tell us about the potato yeah, salad. <laughs> and I, I'm, I'm sorry that I can't credit it because it wasn't. Or I, I, I varied somebody else's um, recipe, but I think um, literally looked at the the produce I had um, to make three salads. We we do a, a regular on our cafe menu as a salad plate, which incorporates three salads and then some mixed leaves and um, so Monday start of the week last week um, I was in the kitchen yesterday and I was looking at the produce that would just come in in the packing shed and thinking what can I do with this and I just googled you know I had potatoes I had sweet corn lots of other bits and I googled potato and sweet corn salad and that popped a recipe so um, this was very simple to make and literally used everything that we had it was sweet corn new potatoes some red onion and some celery um, and then I made a, a light dressing rather than a mayonnaise sort of dressing um, which just had two store cupboard essential items so it was farm ed honey and then and some olive oil and some mustard. And if I say so myself, it, if it, I say so myself it was delicious <laughs> yeah, and excellent. just Thanks. really full of Full of lots of... Full of goodness. Yeah, yeah. goodness. Lovely. Yeah, goodness. Thank you, Sarah. It's a lovely way to end. Yeah. And um, lots of different things. And obviously the, the, the point about a cafe that is farm to table is it will change, the menu will change seasonally, won't it? So it, whenever you come, you can come back and try different seasons and different different tastes. Absolutely. Yeah. Brilliant. Thank you so much. Thank you.